Hey everybody, Jester here. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're looking and reviewing the Eerie One Resin. This stuff is pretty cool. They have themselves a three color selection that you can mix and match and create yourself a rainbow of uh, different miniatures. So let's just dive into it. Hey everybody, welcome to Jester's 3D Tabletop Gaming where we do 3D printing related stuff for your tabletop gaming experiences. Today we're looking at a, a new resin that I've got to say is my personal favorite. I have definitely put this stuff through the ropes. I've printed a, a solid amount of miniatures. I've got a good rainbow, a good selection, and uh, I, I gotta say, I thoroughly enjoy it. So the idea behind this resin is they give you three colors. Cyan, magenta, and yellow. Additionally, black. Uh, there's more to choose from on top of that, but those are the uh, three um, uh, initial ones for their color wheel, which I'll throw up on the screen here. So using this wheel, you can kind of mix different amounts of resin together to get various colors. What I like to do is I actually just like to throw in one color and then print, because <laughs> I was printing an assortment of colors. I would fill my vat, and then the next print, I would add a little bit of, say, blue, for example. And then the next print, I would add a little bit more. And then the next print, a little bit more. And the cool thing with this resin is they also have a transparent option as well. So the idea behind that is once you get your favorite color selected, you just add the transparent resin to the point where you get a nice transparency within your model. For example, these crystals here, they're not the solid blue. I added enough of the transparency to get it to have a nice opaqueness to it. I could have added a whole lot more to really see how far I could stretch this out. Unfortunately, the transparency wasn't really the testing that I was going for, but the little bit that I did try worked surprisingly well. So the claim with the Eerie One resin is that they're going for low shrinkage, high surface smoothness, high hardness, moderate toughness, and low odor. In terms of their low shrinkage, I think they did all right. Some of the models that I had to glue together, I did have to do a little bit of filing in some places to be able to get the pieces to fit together, but I would actually say that it was better in terms of some of the other resins that I have used. High surface smoothness. I'm gonna just take the back of this squig, give him a little bit of a pet, a little bit of a stroke. I mean, yeah, it feels feels real nice and smooth. This guy right here, buttery soft. It's a buttery soft. It's it's very nice. It's it's got a lot of smoothness. I I would say that it it passes on the smoothness. High hardness is one that I want to definitely check out with a a hammer and a couple drop tests. Moderate toughness definitely falls into that category as well. So we'll dive into that here in a second. Not easy to break? Well, let's find out. Let's jump ahead to low odor. I definitely don't know about no odor, but it wasn't really anything more severe than I was smelling with, say, the Anycubic or the Eligu resin. In terms of high hardness, not easy to break, and moderate toughness, let's just do a couple drop tests and find out. So we've got some spiders here, and you know what? Let's just drop a handful of things. I'd say this is a moderately good distance right here. Okay, so right off the bat, we got the the little fishy broke off the uh, the base. But in terms of that, the rest of the fins and the, the little top piece here looks pretty good. Spider is flawless, flawless, flawless. Well, actually we did have a broken leg on the spider, but also a small spindly bit, so that's totally understandable. Other than that, everything held up pretty good. Let's go with another drop test, but a little bit higher. All right, arms fully extended. We got a kablooey. I'm just gonna gather these up and let's investigate. All right, so looking at them, the squig looks fantastic. He was hollowed, by the way. The fish receives no additional damage. Still, once again, small spindly things. The spider has lost one more leg. The big spider has taken no damage. And the octopus actually lost a leg in this process. I think a model hit him. I don't think I dropped him, but I don't quite remember. We'll look at it in the, in the footage. So now I'd like to kind of check out just, uh, just some strength checks here. All right, so... We've got a little squig. I'm gonna feel terrible, but I'm gonna line the other squigs up to watch this. We've got a good old hammer. Let's find out how it does with a literal smash test. 
just as I expected. Broken hollow leg, shattered, the spikes on the top shattered, but apart from that, actually not that bad. I'm just gonna let the hammer itself drop. Okay. No. No. Now a little bit of force. No. So that is a squig explosion. Once again, hammer dropping on its own. Okay, a little damage to the, the spine there. And a moderate amount of force. At least we are consistent. Once again, lost the leg. Okay. Give him another ah! smash because, I mean, <laughs> that is beyond satisfying. I did promise a squig smashing day, so let's see if we can destroy this guy in one shot. Ah! Yeah, that's a solid explosion right there. The squigs are slowly exploding. Oh, you know what? That squig will get to live another day. And we are getting there. The rainbow squigs have had their day. They've had their chances. <laughs> that was a good shattering right there. There is plastic everywhere in my house. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Next test, we're gonna do a bend test. Brush the squig remains away. Okay, so let's see if this little idea is going to work. Line that up. That looked like a uh, about 10 degrees right there. Okay, try one of these little arrows on the side here. Uh, you know what, that almost looked like 15. Let's see if we can go with a, a head. Ah! <sighs> okay, I was trying to snap off his head there. That clearly didn't work, so that is a solid amount of toughness. His torso was glued on, so that's understandable. Let's try this again. Nope, I can't break off his head. Next up, we got a little spider. Okay, just do oh, finger press. Okay, that's snapped. But this is also taking a decent amount of force. I gotta say, I'm actually really impressed. Okay, same thing here again. Let's try out this sword. Line that up on the marker. That wasn't too far. That was almost about 20 degrees before it snapped. That was a lot of fun smashing some squigs. They exploded. There is squig bits everywhere in this place and it's fantastic. So there you go. Uh, I think that's a pretty good uh, representation of their, their strength, toughness, and, uh, and hard to break. Uh, th there was a moderate amount of uh, force that went into each of those uh, those bends. Using the uh, the bend test, uh, we made about between 10 to 20 degrees before each portion snapped. So all in all, with all of the different categories, the color wheel, the vibrancy, the beautiful prints that this thing is producing, I have to say hands down that Eerie One resin at this point in time is my favorite resin. And it's what I'm gonna be using for a while yet unless something else comes into my, my life and wows me. I was printing everything here at 0.05, eight bottom layers, and an exposure of 50 seconds. Regular exposure was six seconds. This episode hosted a range of different miniatures, ranging from Cast and Play to M3DM, to Danny from Miami's Lost Adventures Kickstarter, to Orbital Dice, and the squig was War Mill from Thingiverse. Check them all out, all make fantastic stuff. Print quality, print detail, print color, print vibrancy all came out really good. I thoroughly enjoy Eerie One Resin. It's totally available on Amazon for about $26 Canadian. So I definitely recommend checking it out if you're looking for a new resin to check out. And if not, well then that's okay. Stick with what you're printing. I want to know in the comments below what resin you're using and why it's your favorite and what you like about it. This is my new favorite because I like having fun with colors because colors are fun. If you like these kinds of reviews on the channel, definitely let me know in the comments as well because it keeps me doing them. Anyhow, I had a good time, I hope you had a good time, and until the next time, eh, bye bye now. Ooh, but wait, as always, there's more videos in the top's corners for you to check out. I don't think we'll be exploding squigs next time, but stay tuned, because you never know.